is Taryn Reeves. I am the CEO and founder of Four Eagles Publishing and the Publishing House Concierge. And I work with high-level entrepreneurs to create best-selling books that grow their businesses. I am a USA Today best-selling author. My work has been featured in publications such as the Los Angeles Times, uh, the World News Network, Splash Magazines, Ticker News, um, Barnes & Noble, all those sorts of fun things. So I'm super delighted to be speaking to you today all about living courageously because it is my opinion that the human experience itself takes courage. So as souls, we made an agreement to come here into this 3D, beautiful, beautiful earth, which I absolutely adore. Um, and we signed a contract and I believe that part of that contract was to harness our courage, learn about our courage, because there is no other way to navigate the human experience with joy and with ease, unless we learn to tap into our courage and lean into the full experience. So what does that mean? So it means surrender. It means trust. It means alignment. It means intuition. And living alongside those four things is not your traditional, I suppose, in the box type experience that society tells you is the way to go. It's not spoken about outside of spiritual circles. It's not something that we're taught in schools. It's not something that, unless of course you grew up with parents who were, um, really tapped in into this line um, that was, we're, taught, we're taught. So I am a storyteller. I'm, a, I'm in the publishing game. So I'm going to use story to share with you my experiences and reflect back to you what it looks like to live courageously. So as I said, I was born in Zimbabwe in Africa and I um, Lived there for 15 beautiful, wonderful, wonderful years. Now, if any of you have be, ever been to Africa, it is the most wonderful um, place. It has such a beautiful spiritual heartbeat. It's just got this energy. It's just wonderful. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, unfortunately, due to political conflict and as a lot of African nations experience, there was a lot of political violence and corruption. And long story short, we were forced to flee. And we lost everything um, when we had to move and we went into hiding for a year and we had to apply to Australia. Australia wouldn't accept us as refugees and so we had to apply and it took a year for that paperwork to go through. Long story short, we eventually got in and here I am today. But growing up, I was tapped in. I spoke to the trees and the animals. I ran around barefoot all day. I was just happy to be me. I would take a book to a party and sit in the corner and read because that's who I was. I knew who I was and I didn't know any other way of being. But as we grow up, we have this very biological human need to fit in. And I realized at some point that I was different to everybody around me, that I wasn't acting the same, that I wasn't thinking the same as people around me. And I didn't think there was anything wrong with that until people started to tell me that I was weird, that I was different. And I was like, oh, maybe it's something wrong. And being at that young age, um, I started to mold myself into what I thought was palatable and acceptable to those around me. Now there's nothing wrong with this. It's a very, like I said, biological human need to fit in. Um, and it takes courage to stay true to who you are, stay in alignment with who you are, to lead from that very grounded and true space that may look different to those around you. And at that young age, I wasn't able to do that. So what I did was when we moved to Australia, is I remember very clearly writing my diary 
that I was going to be somebody that everybody liked. I was very much bullied in high school in Africa and um, it, it, had a, it had a lot of trauma on me, right? So I remember writing there, you know, I'm going to be somebody that everybody likes. Um, I, hadn't had my, I hadn't even been kissed by a boy at that stage, um, or a girl for that matter. Um, <laughs> And I had I made this conscious decision with myself that I was going to become this version that I thought everybody liked. So it was kind of like the stage play where I was the center actor, right? So I didn't pick up my courage. I didn't find it. And I tossed away the truth of who I was into a very dark corner of myself to gather dust and to be ignored. And we moved to Australia and I became popular. I was exotic because I had an accent and um, I had curly hair and, you know, I was just this, this person that people wanted to be around and I drank too much, I partied too much, I slept around too much because I wasn't comfortable with this version of myself that I was being and, and those things that I was doing was a way of coping. Right? I drank too much because it numbed that feeling, that that intuition that I knew I was out of alignment. Right? And it took a series of events, kind of like the universe giving me a nice big backhand and saying, girl, you got to wake up. You've got work to do. You've got people to impact. You've got stories to tell. And you can't be behaving like this anymore. So what happened? I got a degree in criminology. Um, from, from university and I was climbing the corporate ladder in the railway. At the age of 23, I thought that I had it made. I had the car, I had the house, I had the six-figure income. I was wearing the suits and the heels and things to work. And, you know, from the outside, it was like, yeah, this, you know, this young lady is killing it. She's really the epitome of success. And, but on the deep inside, I was so deeply unhappy and I didn't even know it. I was so numb to myself that I didn't even know it. So I ended up getting really sick and um, I basically had a spectacular breakdown <laughs> and I was diagnosed with PTSD, chronic depression and major anxiety. So I had a nice tripod going on there and where I come from culturally this isn't something that's spoken about. Mental health is not something that you speak about. You don't air your dirty laundry in public. You That's weak. You don't speak about that. You, you know, pull yourself together and carry on. So I remember um, screaming at my doctor, like hysterically crying and telling her there's no such thing as depression. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm African. I'm strong. I look what I've been through. This is, this is weak. This is not me, you know, and it was so unpalatable to me that I was just having this massive argument because I thought I was broken. But I wasn't broken. I was just misaligned. Anyway, where to from there? I eventually agreed to go on medication from my doctor because of the way she explained it to me. And asking for help in the first place takes courage. Takes so much courage. Okay? There is nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. The way that the doctor explained it to me was that the medication I needed was because I was so stuck in the mud that the medication was going to act like a little truck that comes along, hooks up to me, and just starts to pull me up the hill, right? Slowly pull me out of the mud, right? And once I get to the top, then we could talk about, you know, going off the medication. But what she explained to me is that every time you're trying to get out without help, you're just sliding back in and you're getting stuck. And each time you do, you're getting more and more frustrated and feeling like you're more and more broken. And that's not true. When she explained it to me like that, I agreed to go on the medication. Right? So it takes courage to ask for help. Whether that be in the form of your doctor, a friend, not just in mental health, in anything, you know, and as someone who's like an A-grade person and who thinks that, you know, I'm really strong and 
courageous and a leader and I can do anything, which I can, but there is nothing wrong with asking for help. And that's something that I had to learn and I know many of you do too. So I went on the medication. I got a, I got a casual job working um, in a not-for-profit organization doing their rostering system for people with brain injuries. And I got made redundant a week before I found out I was pregnant. So that was fun. I tried to get a job um, and nobody would hire me because I was pregnant. And I could have lied in my interviews and not said anything about the pregnancy, knowing full well that I probably wouldn't get a job. Um, but I didn't feel right. That didn't feel aligned to me, right? I'm not one to hide truth. So I courageously told them, you know, this, I am pregnant, you know. And so obviously didn't get a job. Um, so I thought, you know what, screw this. That was kind of the last straw for me. I was so sick and tired of living my life according to what people told me was okay. What kind of jobs I could get that were successful in the eyes of society. What degrees I could study. How I needed to dress. How I needed to show up professionally. What I could and could not do with my time. What I could and could not say. So that was kind of the bottom point for me that it really took me to get to to remember who the hell I was and to find my courage again. So it took courage to ask for help in the form of my mental health to start with, right? But then it also took courage and that breaking point for me to say, you know what, screw this. I'm done. I'm done living according to someone else's rules. As far as we are aware, or as far as I'm aware, we get one go at this. We may reincarnate, we may come back. I don't know. That's an adventure yet to be had. But while we are on this 3D plane on Earth and we are 5D leaders coming into lead, we need to say no more. We need to be brave enough to stand up for what we believe in, what we think, how we feel, and we need to lead by example. All of those things take courage. So how do we do that? I think for me, learning to surrender was one of the hardest, hardest things. And it is such a beautiful feeling when you really do learn to surrender. Surrender is not giving up. And I think that that was the main kind of back and forth feeling for me. It was like, oh, you know, that's giving up. That's weak. That's, you know, that's so my conditioning kicked in a lot of the time. But surrender is not that. Surrender is leaning into the trust that something is going to come along, that you are capable beyond your wildest imagination, that you have what it takes, that nothing is going to stop you from achieving your dreams. Thanks, Bryn. So, my husband just bought me a coffee. So, <clears throat> learning to surrender and trust is an art form that takes tremendous amounts of courage. And even when you think that you are really good at it, you can find yourself back in that hole or that space where you suddenly look up and you realize that you've fallen out of that flow, out of that alignment. Let me put it to you this way. Your experience is like floating on a river. Okay, your life experience, your life journey, your soul journey. So there's this beautiful river with many different experiences along the river. At times there are going to be rapids and things are turbulent and rough and unpleasant and uncomfortable. And other times, you know, the birds are chirping, the wind is gently blowing, you're gently floating down the river. It's beautiful. Okay. 
when you hit those tough times, those turbulent times, those rapids, you have a choice. You can choose to grab onto a boulder and hang on for dear life while the waves crash into you and you are resisting the flow and it hurts. It's uncomfortable. Water's going up your nose, your skin's scraping off because you're trying so hard to like hold on to this rock and it just keeps hitting you again and again and again and again and again until you learn to let go and allow the river to carry you into calmer waters. Now the calmer waters don't last forever. There are inevitably going to be rapids downriver, right? But are we making the choice to resist the flow? Or are we choosing our courage and surrender, leaning into surrender to allow us to have that experience without attachment, without grounding ourselves in the turbulent water of our expectations. And oh, it should be happening like this and this wasn't the plan. Or are we going to choose to accept, take action where we can and allow the river to carry us to calmer waters? I think option two is by far the easiest, but it takes courage to let go of the rock because we're not in control. We are not in control. So One of the, one of my favorite meditations is by Sarah Blondin and it's called Learning to Surrender. It is the meditation that I go to all the time on a regular basis when I am feeling like I want to grab onto that rock and I want to resist the flow and I don't have the courage within me to let go of my expectations, to let go of my ideas and my conditioning and my way of being that meditation I strongly recommend it it really helps me to go it's okay the universe is reordering my life to bring me what it is that I've asked for because the universe is always working in your favor always it just doesn't look like we expect it to look a lot of the time. And that is where that resistance and that, that uncomfortableness comes in. Hey, Kellyanne, you're welcome, my darling. So trust is another thing. Okay, I want to share a bit of a story with you. Another story <laughs> is that... When you trust your intuition, when you learn to hear your intuition, nothing bad can come from that. Right? Now, a lot of the times that our intuition speaks to us does not make sense immediately. It's not kind of like this glaring, the obvious thing that happens. And it especially doesn't make sense to those around you. So that can lead to some uncomfortable conversations, right? I want to share this story with you. I started my business out as a virtual assistant. I grew it up to be a virtual assistant and web development agency and I booked that out. I then added business coaching onto that and I booked that out too. Now, all of those things were great and I was running a six-figure business and a part of me was still a bit like, mm, I don't feel like I'm quite in the flow. There's something else out here for me, right? The opportunity to start my own publishing company with a mentor came along and it made no sense. It was a huge investment for me at the time. So I was really hitting my upper my, uh, money beliefs and time investment. I had a young child, have a young child. She's only five at the moment. And it would require me restructuring the six-figure business that I had just spent the past four years building up, right? 
So my logical kind of masculine A personality type brain was like, this makes no sense. You can't be doing this. You know, what if, you know, you go broke and you have to live in a box and, you know, all these disastrous type thoughts running through my head. So I said to the universe, right, my intuition speaks to me through my gut and also through signs. And I said to the universe, I said, okay, I will leap, but I need you to show me an eagle. The eagle is my spirit animal and they're not common around where I live. So I was like, I need you to show me an eagle if this is the right path. And I need to see it within the next 24 hours. So I asked for something very specific within a specific time frame, right? Because otherwise these things can just drag on for ages and you can make up all of these stories about things that are and aren't there and whatever. Anyway, no joke. Half an hour later, I'm driving down the road to go and pick up some food for my chickens. And this huge eagle flies across the road in front of me. And so even though my intuition was like, yep, okay, we're all in, my head was like, oh, no, 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 that's just coincidence, right? So my fear is now well and truly overriding my intuition. No, no, that's just a coincidence. I'm just going to think about this a bit more. So I go and I pick up the chicken food and I'm driving back and I see two different eagles flying together across the road in front of me. And I was like, come on, really? No, no. And then I was like, oh my God, all these thoughts of what if, what if this is a disaster? What if I go broke? What if everyone laughs at me? What if I lose all my clientele? What if I'm a failure and I have to go back to corporate? All of these things. What if you're not a good role model for your daughter? Catastrophizing. So I was like, I just need some more time to think about this. And by this stage, I swear my spirit team is sitting there rolling their eyes and going, are you for real? What do we have to do to get this woman to listen? <laughs> right? So I stopped at my mum's on the way home because I had to drop something there. And I opened the front door. And she's, I, I, when you walk into her house, it's into the living room. And she had the TV on on National Geographic. And there's a huge eagle on the screen. And at that stage, I just went, okay. I picked up my courage and I just said, I know this doesn't make sense. Not right now, but I have to find my courage and I have to leap all in, two feet. Because there is no halfway. You can't do things by heart. You can't be, you can't ask for something and then just dip your toe in and just feel around because that's never going to fully come into being. It's like strangling or folding a hose rather. And the water's trying to come out and now it's just a dribble. Whereas if you just let it be, it comes out in its full glorious flow. Right? There is no halfway. So I jumped in both feet. And that's why my publishing company is called Four Eagles Publishing. It's a little nod to the courage it takes in business and in life to trust your intuition, to so surrender to the messages that come to you, to your higher knowing, even if it doesn't make sense yet. And it has been one of the best things that I have ever done. This is what I'm on this earth to do. This is what the universe was trying to reorder for me. Now, that is not to say that things don't still get hard. And I think this, this, you know, as we step more and more into our leadership, it can, we can have this false sense of it's going to get easier. Once I hit six figures, you know, I'm not going to have these problems. Everything's going to be solved. I'm going to be so happy. Right. Once I hit six figures, this is going to happen. Once I do this, once I have this, once I say this, once I, you know, get in a relationship with that person, this is going to happen for me. That is not true. There are always going to be challenges. The grass is not always greener. The grass is greener where you nurture it, where you water it, where you are right now. Because there's no guarantee of tomorrow. So instead of looking outside of ourselves all the time and looking forward all the time, what can I do right now that will make me feel abundant? 
What can I do right now that will bring me the most joy? What is in my heart right now that I know that I have to say? All of that takes courage. Living in the now takes courage because this natural human activity to plan ahead, right? And I love planning, don't get me wrong, right? But it's non-attached planning. This is the plan. This is what I'm going to do to go towards it. This is the steps that I need to take. These are the people I need to work with. If it doesn't happen that way, we need to be okay with that. And then we need to plan a different plan and a different one and a different one. All of that takes courage. Right? And on some days, we might just have had enough. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We don't just throw our toys out of the pram and say, I'm done. This isn't working. My dreams aren't possible for me. I'm not good enough. She must have something that I don't have. All of that is just simply not true. When that happens, because it will happen, it happens, still happens for me. And it will continue to happen for me well into the future and probably beyond. It's okay to take time out and feel those feelings. That is part of living courageously, is recognizing when you're feeling that way, leaning into it, allowing it, feeling it, and it's uncomfortable. And us humans, we don't do so well with discomfort. But we need to learn to live with our discomfort, our uncomfortable feelings, our shadows, our dark side, our dark moments, our low moments. Sometimes we need to experience them alone. Other times we need to find the courage to ask for help. To speak up. To use our voice. To say, you know what, actually, I'm having a pretty shit day today. All of that is okay. There is nothing wrong with that. So we have those moments. We sit in those uncomfortable places. We process whatever your toolkit is. And you need a toolkit in life. I'll speak about that in a moment. You pick up those tools and you use them. You didn't learn about all of these different tools. You didn't have all of these experiences not to use them. That's like an artist, you know, just downing his paints and never painting again. You need to use your tools in those dark times, in those times where you need to find your courage. Have the experience, but then you get up again because your dreams are valid. You are worthy of having whatever it is that you desire and don't let anybody, anybody tell you that you are not good enough, least of all yourself. Because it's often the stories we are telling ourselves that are holding us back. You are worthy, your dreams are worthy, but they're not gonna happen if you can't find the courage to get up again and again and again every time you get knocked down. And you will get knocked down again and again and again. But each time you do, there's a lesson to learn. There are decisions to make. There are feelings to feel. That's where the growth happens. And if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah? So let's talk about the toolkit. Your intuition is your biggest tool. Right? And now intuition speaks to everybody in different ways. Um, for me, I, I know things. I just know them like that, like in an instant. And I also feel them. Very big heart feeling person, me. I feel them in my physical chest here. And also just that knowing, right? But I've only got a split second to trust that before my brain gets in the way, my ego gets in the way and it kicks in and I start telling myself those stories. 
And that is the fastest way to derail my joy, joy train. Right? And I want my joy train on the tracks, people. <laughs> okay. So, some people may hear things. Some people may see things. Some people may journal and it comes through in their journaling. Whatever way your intuition speaks to you, practice with it. Because as we grow up, in my experience, I have found that it gets harder and harder to hear your intuition if you're not in continuous connection with it. Because it's not something that we're taught. And we should be. Unless you're hanging around with awesome people, in which case, lucky you. I unfortunately did not have that experience growing up. Not that the people around me weren't awesome. But, that's by the by. We have to relearn. We have to remember who we are and how we operate and what we came here to do. So it's continual practice to undo that conditioning and that habit of the more palatable actress actor version of ourself. That doesn't mean we walk around being assholes and whatever, right? There is a way to deliver your message and a way to be in the world that is not abrasive, okay? You can create massive, massive change from a place of gentle, persistent alignment. Take Mahatma Gandhi, for example, right? One of the most gentle people never met him, want to, obviously, <laughs> maybe in the next life. Um, one of the most gentle people who revolutionized an entire country through soft words, gentle action. Right? So courage doesn't necessarily mean this warrior version of yourself. It can be gentle too. Sometimes you do need to get your warrior on. You do need to let your lioness out. But not all the time. And that's something that I had to learn too. I was very much like a warrior fight kind of person. But it also takes courage to be gentle. To keep showing up. To keep in alignment. To keep true to you. Right? So, your intuition. Journaling meditation, yoga, grounding in nature, gardening, reading, bubble baths, essential oils, music, dance, art, running, whatever it is for you that's in your toolkit for coping, for realigning, for kind of shaking off all of the baggage that we collect throughout our day unintentionally you need to be doing those and harnessing those when you need them okay so i want to share with you an exercise that has been invaluable to me music and dance beautiful yeah i'm, I'm always down for a good little dance off and i sort of shake around my daughter thinks i'm a bit mad but that's okay <laughs> Maybe I am a bit mad. Um, the exercise is the what's the worst that can happen exercise. Okay, so instead of keeping it all up in here and running around and around like a hamster on a wheel, getting yourself into a tiz was about a situation, when your fear shows up, we do the what's the worst that can happen exercise. So you get down a piece of paper and you write down on this piece of paper, What's the worst that could happen? And I want you to get deep, like deep in there. I'll give you an example. So I was doing a what's the worst that could happen? You know, and the, you know, I was like, ah, oh, my family won't talk to me. Um, I'll lose money. People will laugh at me. People will say mean things to me on the internet. I'll feel like a fa failure. Um, I won't be able to rebuild what I've created. We'll go bankrupt and lose the house. Then I'll have to live in a box. 
then my daughter will get a cold and die. Like I'm, I'm talking like all of these catastrophes, these real deep, dark places, you need to go, what is the absolute worst, worst thing that could happen? And you write them all down, okay? Then I leave that for a bit. Then I go and use one of my tools. I go for a walk or go do some grounding, do some dancing, breathing, whatever it is. Then you come back and you start a fresh piece of paper. What's the best thing that can happen? My business could explode in a good way. <laughs> I could impact more people. I can change lives. My business can grow so I can finally start that not-for-profit charity that I want to start. I will be more in alignment with my purpose and who I am and what I came here to do. I will wake up every morning happy. I will lead from a place of heart and connected groundedness. Right? So we've got your two extreme contrasts here. What's the worst that could happen and what's the best that can happen? Right? Now, with the what's the worst that could happen, we can go through here now and go, okay, well, if this was to happen, is it really going to get this bad? So, for example, we've, we've got down to the bankrupt line. Okay, we've gone bankrupt and I won't be able to put food on the table. Do you have friends who would come and, and give you food? Do you have family who would come and give you food? Could you go to a local shelter? A food bank? Could you rebuild whatever it is that you broke? Because quite often these stories on the what's the worst that could happen and everything is just a story. Your reality is a story you are telling yourself based on your past experiences, your current experiences and your future projections. It's a story. And you only you have the ability to pick up that pen, cross out that line and rewrite another one and to continue writing it. And when you don't like what you're writing, start again. It's not like you've got this limit on things that you can and can't do. Cross it out, write it again, your choice. Isn't that an amazing, amazing thing to have? What a gift! To be able to choose again limitlessly. Unlimited choices. Oh yeah, you know what? I actually don't like the story that I find myself in. How can I rewrite it? What can I do to realign myself to that path? Living this way takes tremendous courage. But each and every one of us has it within us to do it and to do it again and again and again. And just like exercising, it becomes easier each and every time you do it. And all of a sudden, you look up and you are living an amazing, courageous life. The life you've dreamt, the life that you have created in co-creation with the universe. You did that, not somebody else. You have the power within you to do that. And if you break it, because this was one of my big fears that keeps coming, oh my God, I can't break everything that I've built so hard, I've worked so hard to do. I can't possibly change the social platform because X, Y, and Z, whatever. My new motto, if you break it, you can fix it. Why? Because you built it in the first place. You created your situation in the first place. You can rebuild it. Okay. So, for those of you who have been listening, Kelly, I know you're here and I appreciate you so much. Thank you. It's um, been a pleasure to speak with you today, to share space with you, to share some of my experiences with you about living a courageous life. 
and about life in general. If you feel like you would like to come and find me, please come and find me on social media. Send me a message, send me a friend request. I'm a real person. I love real in-depth conversations. So come and find me. If you are wanting to write a book, whether that's a multi-author book, a solo book, a lead magnet book, create an oracle card deck, any of those sorts of things, and you would like somebody to support you in that capacity, whether it's writing, um, publishing or marketing your book, then I am absolutely your woman. Come and find me because storytelling has the power to change lives and leave legacies. And that's how we reach across time and space and create change. So Kelly's asking, what's the name of the meditation again? It's called Learning to Surrender by Sarah Blondin. She's an amazing, amazing lady. Let me find it for you. I'm going to pop it in the, in the chat. Okay, so it, it is on Insight Timer, if you guys um, are on Insight Timer, but I also know that it's on YouTube um, and all of these other wonderful places. And it's only eight minutes long, which for a busy person like me, um, is ideal. I'm not one of your hours meditation type ladies. Maybe one day I will be. I've tried. There we go. I've popped the meditation inside of the chat for those of you who are looking for it. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so, so much, Abigail, for hosting this beautiful, beautiful space. Lots of love to you all. And I'm looking forward to watching you all bloom into your courageous leadership. So much love. Bye.